I'm Caitlin Olson, nurse practitioner with cardiology at Emerson Hospital. I'm here to talk about atrial fibrillation and how it relates to a stroke. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia in the United States, affecting more than 3 million people. It is an irregular heart rhythm that causes the top chambers of the heart to quiver or fibrillate rather than beating in a coordinated fashion. We diagnose this based on an EKG which shows irregular rhythm without organized activity from the top chambers of the heart. Your heart can go in and out of atrial fibrillation, sometimes making it difficult to diagnose. In these cases, we use external heart monitors for a period of time up to 30 days to help monitor for a possible arrhythmia. Symptoms of atrial fibrillation can differ from person to person. Some people feel nothing at all. Other people feel their heart skipping or racing. They can feel lightheaded or dizzy. Some people feel very fatigued or anxious. Some people have chest pain. Atrial fibrillation can cause a stroke because the top chambers of the heart are not adequately pushing blood out into the bottom chambers of the heart. And when blood sits, it can pool and clot. A piece of that clot can then break off and travel up into the brain, obstructing blood flow. So how do we treat atrial fibrillation? There's two parts. The first part is controlling the heart rate and the heart rhythm. And we can do that with different medications that keep the heart rate controlled and can minimize symptoms. There are also medications that can keep you out of atrial fibrillation altogether. The second part of managing atrial fibrillation is managing the risk of stroke. We do that using medications that thin the blood by blocking certain clotting factors. These medications are things like Coumadin, which has been around for a very long time. It requires that your blood be checked frequently to make sure that the Coumadin level is at an appropriate range and is not putting you at risk for bleeding. In the last 10 years or so, we've developed newer medications that do not require blood monitoring and are actually associated with less risk of stroke and less risk of bleeding. These medications are called Xarelto, Eliquis, and Pradaxa and they are the most common medications that we use now. Other types of blood thinners like aspirin or Plavix aren't effective at reducing the risk of stroke with atrial fibrillation because they work through a different mechanism. There are certain risk factors for atrial fibrillation, including older age, being overweight, high blood pressure, and sleep apnea. So treating these medical conditions can help reduce your risk of having recurrences of atrial fibrillation. 